Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. It's five o'clock today, and it's Community Matters with Sharon Moriwaki. May I say, Senator Sharon Moriwaki, uh, who is a member of the Hawaii State Senate and a member of the Special Committee on COVID, who, very important, which has been meeting even during this recess on a regular basis and doing a lot of things. And she's here to tell us about what's going on in her committee and in the Senate these days in the crisis of uh, coronavirus. Welcome to the show, Sharon. So nice to see you. Good seeing you, Jay. It's been a while. This pandemic has, has kept us separated. Haven't seen you. Glad to be here amidst yeah. the COVID and remotely. Yes, well, since you're at home, I think you're at home. I'm at uh, home. Okay, then, and you're not walking, you're not subject to the rule that requires you to wear a mask. So uh, for the show, maybe you could take the mask off just for a little while. <laughs> okay, it's just, just part of my uniform. <laughs> <See>? <laughs> but I just want to make, make it really clear that as of this week, uh, whenever you go into a grocery store or any place, you need to mask up. And if you don't have a mask, you can take a scarf, put it around your face, but you really need to mask up. And uh, that's a new requirement from the governor now. Um, the mayor uh, Caldwell had one for the city, but this is for the state, protect not only yourself, but really your neighbors. It's caring for each other, really big time. Yeah, I know you care about caring for each other. Incidentally, uh, uh, Kurt Glover was on the show just an hour ago, you know. Oh. He, he came down with John Wahe as his guest. Oh, so okay. we're hearing from everybody today. Good, good. First the mayor and now you, Sharon. Wow, what a day. <laughs> <laughs> so so tell us about, you know, how, how, how things have gone in the Senate. I mean, uh, Senator Ishihara came down with uh, COVID. Uh, the Senate went into recess, it's still in recess. It's possible that the Senate could reconvene, but I don't know what the chances are there. Um, and, and then your committee was formed somewhere along the line and your committee has been active. I know this because I get your newsletter. Uh, almost every day I get a newsletter from you about the committee. So talk about the Senate and talk about your committee. Okay, the committee was formed uh, over a month ago, and, and actually the actual date, like somewhat sometime February 28th or thereabouts, uh, it was uh, the start of the COVID. When we heard about it, the Senate Ways and Means Committee, in which I sit, uh, had a meeting, a briefing, but we wanted to hear from all the departments. What are your plans for COVID? What are the budget requests for COVID so we would be prepared? And as the directors came in and spoke to us, we were really alarmed that there wasn't this sense of urgency. They had no plan. So we asked for a plan. We gave them a week or so to come up with your emergency response plans. And we still haven't gotten those plans. Uh, we got it from some of the departments who are really pushing forward, like DHS and, and, um, and the Department of Defense. And, and didn't get it from everybody else. And we were very, very concerned. So the chair of Ways and Means, uh, Donovan Dela Cruz, um, went to the Senate president and said, you know, we've got to move this along. There's gotta be a better sense of urgency because this is going to really turn into big time because we see it happen elsewhere. Uh, and uh, with that, the Senate uh, president uh, appointed a committee of six, and it's called the Special Committee uh, on COVID-19. And we've been meeting since, ever since. It's for the last almost month now, and meeting with separate departments. So the focus really is on state government. How do we have that urgency? How do we have a plan during this time of emergency? So we make sure that government services that should be serving the public, like unemployment insurance, like some of the services uh, that the Department of Human Services has, uh, like our Department of Defense that now is into the high EMA, the emergency management mode. All of these programs really needing to gear up and make sure that their employees are really well supported in supporting all of us in the community. And so th that's kind of the genesis and how we haven't felt that, that it's been proceeding as fast as we would like. So we're still here, we're still here. 
there well, has and you're going to continue that you're going to continue these meetings as as long as the uh, the, the crisis lasts i take it this is an ongoing indefinite committee no well we felt that you know it was only during the time when we could get sort of you know nudge the administration they would start doing it um on their own uh we had to work really closely with the harbors and work really closely with airports and just only this past week did airports now come through with seeing their role as protecting our borders and and actually testing and, and quarantining and requiring it of everybody who comes through not just the visitors but every single person who wants to come onto our shore needs to be tested they now have the thermal test they have to give us actual phone numbers so we don't have a situation like we did with last week uh, with that woman who got through with a PO box uh, and making sure that every person has a residence or a hotel room to go to and that they can be monitored for 14 days while they stay in their room self isolated not going to the beach staying in their room so that didn't happen just till this past friday mm -hmm. And yeah, that's um, that's a kind of um, you know a problem in the sense that you say, well, fourteen days. We want you to stay fourteen days in in isolation, and uh, you can't have a policeman standing outside the door. It's yeah. it's very hard to actually uh, enforce that, yeah. and it's an honor system. And, uh, but you also have to. What do you do? You call them and check where they are. Yeah. You so uh, you have some um, tourism authority has been very good, and they really got it. Uh, they have the whole procedure set. So three times during this day, they will call at, at unannounced times and to see if the person is in the room. If the person is not in the room, then they'll call the hotel to go up and check. And so up to this point, it wasn't so um, structured that there would be somebody checking on the person in the room. If they're not in the room, they get turned over to uh, the county, which is the enforcement agency, so HPD, will come down and actually give you a citation, which will either charge you, I mean, they'll, they'll fine you $5,000 or a year in prison maximum if you still refuse to comply with our quarantine law. No, well, that's, that's appropriate. And it's appropriate to enforce it. And it's appropriate to put those penalties on anyone who doesn't. I mean, it's a condition of arriving here. We have to, you know, keep our population safe. Right. And without enforcement on that, uh, it's a, it's an open, it's a sieve is the problem. Yeah. 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 And it's been a real problem. And, and you know, um, while we've kept the numbers down, there's always this view to the recovery. But, you know, if we do this right, and we have procedures set up that work, then think about this, that Hawaii would be the only destination in the world that's safe for you to come because we do all this testing before anybody arrives in state. And we've got procedures that will and let you enjoy your time while here, mm -hmm. being healthy with all of us who presumably are healthy. Well, we still have 500 cases and we're, we still have yeah. new yeah. cases developing. So I wonder, you know, what about testing? Is the committee or is the administration uh, pursuing the possibility of testing? I know that we're getting um, we're getting some mixed messages from from Donald Trump about this, um, but uh, do we have sufficient testing to test everybody who comes or to test um, you know everyone who could be carrying the virus, uh, or or is is that an imperfection in our in our protection? Yes, I think that we don't have systems set up uh, and we so we don't have apparently we don't have all the supplies the test kits the the antigen the whatever we need um, and so there's mixed messages from the department of health director saying we don't have enough test kits on the other hand we hear the lieutenant governor saying we should test everybody uh, we hear uh, and the committee has been really um, concerned about this because we feel that if you don't test and you don't know the prevalence, then how are you going to set up your protections? How are you going to know you have enough inventory in terms of hospitals, test kits, um, as well as uh, ventilators if you need them? And so there really needs to be a sync 
thinking of, of all of that. And we, did, we haven't heard that yet. We hope to hear it on Wednesday. We're asking the health director back again. And we also um, are asking um, Dr. Hankins if he can come. He is the health doc on the HIEMA side, the emergency um, management side, and see what should be the standard? What should we be doing? Uh, on the one hand, uh, the director of health tells us we don't want to test people who are asymptomatic. On the other hand, we hear that asymptomatic people could be carriers. So where is it? Where do you draw the line? How do you get at making sure that the carriers are in our pool if they in fact are? So the important part of um, what I see that needs to really be beefed up, or at least we need to set up a protocol as we did with the airports and how you quarantine, what's that procedure, is a, a contact tracing. If you have, a, and we have 584 positive cases, who have these people touched? Now, who do you start, you interview everybody that this person has touched and keep going you know, spreading out and testing all of them. And until 14 days has progressed and that there's nothing there, uh, then, then move on, but keep track of that data because that data will tell us how pervasive this is or not. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I think that's where we seem to be, I wouldn't say miscommunicating, but it really isn't um, clear from the health director what it is, what is surveillance, what is diagnosis? What is you know um, the other side of quarantining and saying this person has recovered or not? You know, and and it's not clear. Uh, we haven't had clear messages on that, uh, and that's what the Senate has been asking for. And I hope uh, we start moving in that direction. I watched the press conference today from the administration with Director Anderson, and he now has charts and he shows you, you know, uh, where we are and the number of cases tested and so forth. So the, the, this is starting to get a little more data driven, which is nice. Uh, and, and hopefully because of that track, we might have some protocols set up that will keep us safe. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure glad you're doing this. I'm sure glad your committee is meeting. It performs a very valuable function called an oversight function over state government. Um, you do, you do uh, carry a big stick. You are the Senate. You are the legislature in the absence of a recess. And people will do listen to you. And they will and do come and talk to you and answer your questions. You're in a great spot for that. And the other thing is, you're, uh, to me, you're fully aware, fully engaged, and I'm really happy that you're doing this. In a time when information you know, gets confused, in a time when uh, some officials don't want to tell you the whole story, if they don't want to excite people and go into a panic, uh, it's really important that we have you doing this. The other thing is I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that you're on the quarantine thing because as you said, Sharon, um, it, it, this is a really big point. Hawaii could be uh, a safe place. It could uh, you know, rebuild its tourism um, on the notion that Hawaii is as safe as it gets anywhere. But to do that, we've got to flatten the curve. We've got to get the cases down. And the way to get the cases down is, is testing. I mean, there's gotta be a way, you know, maybe Drush screen could get out there. Uh, wherever they are, let's find the test kits. Let's, let's find them and buy them, whatever you have to do. Let's test everybody who tries to come in here. Uh, and, let's, and let's do uh, tracking. Uh, you know, I'm aware of a couple of tracking tracking possibilities. One, of course, is in Wuhan. The Chinese built a tracking device and they require you to put it on your phone and it tracks you on GPS. It knows where you are. If you're not in the right place, then things happen. Um, I, I'm not sure that they're sharing that or whether it's shareable, but, but they have shown us what kind of functionality would be good on a tracking system. It's where you are and who you've been near. The other one in Israel. Israel has a working model of a, of a tracking system. Uh, and it would be easy to find out exactly who there had developed it and how well it works. But I saw a piece uh, on, my, on my reading yesterday to suggest that it was as good as anything in the world. And it was voluntary as opposed to China, which is not voluntary. You know, I'm, in the US, you have to be voluntary. Um, and the third possibility is uh, a week ago or so, there was a, a number of articles about Google and Apple 
who are collaborating to build a voluntary tracking system in this country. Uh, it's based on um, you know who has reported uh, to have the virus, who is positive, uh, and who has been near anybody who's been positive. And the thing uses a kind of GPS and a Bluetooth combination to identify anybody near you who's been positive, uh, and then it warns you. Uh, or it warns someone else, like the health department, about this. And so um, you can you know, get a data system like that, and you can track everybody about everything. The more tracking and GPS, uh, the more identification and enforcement of quarantine, the better we're going to be, the, the flatter the curve is going to be, and the better Hawaii is going to look as an advanced technological society, which is a, a safe place for tourists to come. This is so important. I'm so glad you're thinking about that. Um, no, gotta, you got to keep on doing it, Sharon. I agree with you, Jamie, and this is what we're trying to see whether we can do it or not. You know, there are always these privacy concerns, and so the uh, the attorneys get involved. Um, so to the degree that we can show that it's the police power of the state or it's for the protection of our health and safety, perhaps we can get over that hurdle. But right now, I think it's that's why it's still voluntary and not require a requirement of being able to come into state. And, and you know, a lot of a lot of the cases, positive cases have not been uh, all visitors. It's returning residents, you know, gone to Las Vegas, gone to China, gone, you know, to various places where there were hot spots and they're coming back, bringing that and, and infect, infecting their whole family, you know, larger households more. And then they go oh. shopping and, you know, on and on. So um, I think it's really important for us to. We're always talking about this new normal, normalcy is is to be much more mindful about what we do, who we 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 actually are, are our neighbors, and what we can do to care for everybody because we all matter, and not be so flippant about you know oh you know I'm I'm healthy it's okay you know yeah no that's that's inconsiderate because you could you could be completely asymptomatic and infecting everybody in the room. And it goes to your slogan that I know you have believed deeply in, and that is that we should all care for each other. So this is very important in a larger context. But then that takes me to the question about, um, you know, coming back and trying to resurrect the economy. Uh, you know, Donald Trump has uh, made statements that have created all kind of consternation about, uh, you know, coming back and, and uh, liberating some states uh, as against the advice of their own officials. Um, which is, it's really, the country is very confused about it. Where are we in Hawaii about coming back? I saw something about how uh, the governor did not anticipate um, taking the lockdown off by April 30. He was going to extend that. But where is the committee? Where is its thinking about coming back and trying to open things up and rebuild the economy? Is it now? Is it later? How much later? Well, it is the governor's call, but um, the CDC, I think, I think the White House now has agreed that um, you're coming out of the woods if you've had 14 days of a downward trajectory of your positive cases. So you've got to be going down so, so that, and it's, and it's, and it's, it, it's 14 days. It's not just, oh, today we're down. Okay, let's open up. And so um, I think that's an important um, standard to look at. And the more that we social distance and use our masks and uh, be really clear about washing our hands and all of the, all of the you know, you've, 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 got, you've, you've got the drill, um, that we keep away from each other as much as we love to hug and kiss and <laughs> the aloha. Uh, to be very mindful that that you're infecting other people. You, I think at one point the health director said, you know, think as if you have the virus. So whatever you do should be with that in mind, so that we really do stop the contagion. So yeah. so if you use that two week period, we are uh, not quite out of the woods. And yeah. so I don't think that that April 30th day will hold. It probably will be extended. I don't know for how long, whether it's a month or two more weeks or what, but the proclamations are all in place till April 30th. Mm -hmm. um, and we're not, we're not going to do it within 14 days. We're, no, 
We right. still have cases. Yeah. So where is it all going? I'm sure you must think about this. I mean, we all think about it. We all think about it at three in the morning. Uh, you know, it's just, it's kind of a sunrise, sunset, one day blends into the other, uh, staying at home, um, trying to engage your mind and keep healthy uh, and all that and, and being completely, um, you know, unsure about the future. Um, you're in a position where, you know, you are looking at the future and we, we, we need you to do that. But what what is the future? How do you see this unfolding? It's not easy. And at the end, we're, we're going to have the cold shock of finding out that what we what we thought was the, you know, the old way isn't available anymore. And we're going to have to be flexible enough to adapt to a new normal and build affirmatively work at building a new normal. This is all pretty scary stuff. How do you see it unfolding, especially in Hawaii? Well, you know me, I'm the forever optimist. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, I do know that. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> so I, I, you know, the way I look at this is that we've been on this treadmill, you know, bigger, better, bigger, 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 uh, you know, and um, I, I think that the silver lining in this is that we, it gives us time to take pause, not by our own voluntary means, because we wouldn't do it, uh, but uh, from above or wherever it's coming <laughs> from Wuhan, um, is, is that we should take advantage, to me, you should take advantage of this time, of being more mindful about what is important. You know, I, I just got an email, email message from one of my constituents who said, you know, I'm really sad because my, my um, parent was in, in a uh, facility and they locked down the facility because they wanted to protect everybody. So yesterday the parent died and he never got to see his parents. So it gives you pause to what's important in life. Uh, and looking at where the new normal will be, we will probably be transformed because now we know we can do a lot of things remotely so we don't have to have the traffic congestion. We know that, that there's a lot more that we can do that's innovative uh, using technology or using um, a lot more of our interconnection, not necessarily at the pace that we want, but um, looking at things that count. Uh, I think those are really important because as we move to that place, uh, for example, I heard uh, Alan Oshima and uh, uh, HMSA uh, CEO Mugita um, talk about, we've got to look at, okay, when we look at um, our travel industry, we look at people coming in or we look at anybody, um, how do we test? You know, other, other countries um, that have been able, been, been through SARS like South Korea and um, Singapore, Hong Kong, you know, they thermal test, they wear masks, they, they do things differently because of such a mass contagion that killed so many that you know, we need to be much more mindful. So I, you know, not knowing where it's going, but I think the economy can be stronger and better if we look at it as a new way of how we make money, how we take care of our employees, and how we become a stronger state because of that. Yeah, I, we had uh, Jane Sawyer from the SBA on earlier today. She said, well, if you're, if you're a manager and you find yourself at home, then think of how you can manage better after the deluge here. Think, you know, write papers to yourself, uh, attack problems that you haven't really been able to solve before. Use the time to think into a better future. And I sure agree with that. I also think I want to add. Let me give you one example. Um, unemployment insurance. It's been really the bane of our whole, you know, this whole response period. And, and I feel for the labor director, when he came to us before WAM, uh, he said, we asked, okay, how many people do you need? He's always oh, going to be really great. It's going to be really big problem. So I need, I need staff to help me. So how many do you need? 21 staff. Okay. I mean, that's how the problem was seen as, you know, handleable. Uh, 230,000 claims later, uh, what we're sending 200 people over there. And that was with a lot of pushing and tugging and all of that. But the one thing that that's the new normal, um, 
when we asked him, okay, how many can you take at a time? 20 at a time, because he said, I can't get my staff off the line in order to train people, and I can only train 20 at a time. Well, with the technology, PowerPoint, um, um, HRD staff going over there, re-engineering or engineering, and just see the process, what is it, and what can be streamlined. That's a new normal. It's a new normal. What things don't you need? I mean, you need to just take out because it's not really helping the process. And that's, that, that's the kind of thing that we can do now as we go forward, whether it's contact tracing, whether it's testing, whether it's um, how we test at the borders, you know, the, the ships coming in, the planes coming in, how we deal with um, everything that state government does is pretty bureaucratic and a lot of red tape. Those are things that we could re-engineer now, today, before we get to the to the other side of this pandemic. That's yeah. the kind of future that that's ahead if people start looking at it in a way of, as you say, Jane Sawyer saying, let's look at how a manager can manage better what they are in charge of. Yeah, no boundaries on that. You know, it reminds me of that whole affair with uh, uh, some state agencies are are paying their their staffers to stay at home and not work. Um, and then I think it was the governor wanted them to take jobs, uh, do work for other agencies where it was needed. Uh, and they said, no, we won't do that. The uh, HGEA said, no, we don't want to do that. Uh, and if they do that, they have to get uh, this kind of kicker on top of their salary for 25%. And I said, well, this, this is not sustainable. I don't know how it's gonna work <laughs> out. Uh, I, I, then it was a talk about reducing the salaries across the board. I don't know how it's gonna work <laughs> out, but I'll tell you one thing. At the end of the day, it's gonna be different. At the end of the day, st state workers are gonna to have to be more flexible. They're gonna to have to be able to pitch in and volunteer for other agencies. At the end of the day, nobody's gonna tolerate this kind of thing about, oh, I have to stay home and not work and get paid anyway. Um, that's you not- know, You know, the, the, the employees who are volunteering, bless their soul, but they, they are showing what what work is. I mean, we do the work that has to be done to serve the people of this state. And um, I think they're happy doing that, learning some other skill. Um, you know, people are 200 people coming yeah. from other agencies, you know. It strikes me that government is going to be, in, especially in Hawaii, especially with a committee like yours to, you know, to participate in the conversation, at least, uh, government is going to be remade. And and in that regard, I want to, I want to close by saying this. I, I believe that uh, this is going to teach uh, state government, especially in Hawaii, where we all know what you know what goes on. Uh, it's going to it's going to it's going to improve state government because we're going to get new leaders emerging. You know, people who can handle things going forward, to change things going forward, uh, to to focus on these kinds of things you've been talking about on a long term basis. And and I mean, new leaders are emerging right now. And I frankly, I want to I will say this in public. I consider you one of those new leaders, Sharon, what you're doing and how you're rolling up your sleeves on this. I, I think it's fabulous that you're doing this. And well, it, it's not it, just it me. It's, of a, a new my time. Colleagues, it's my colleagues as well. So give them credit. I mean, of I'm just course. Born, you know, one of six on the Senate committee and there are others in the House committee. So, you know, all of us pitching in together. Okay, we tell them we want them on the show, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Sharon Moriwaki, <laughs> state senator. I am my favorite state senator. Thank you so much for joining us today, Sharon. Great my to pleasure. talk to you. I, I want to catch up with you again as we go down, down the trail here. Aloha. And you take care. Stay healthy. Take Wear your mask. Okay. Okay. And wash your hands. <laughs> wash your hands. <laughs> they won't think you're neurotic. Just wash your hands. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. <laughs>